Hi, have you heard about Bipcoin? Not Bitcoin, but Bipcoin. Bravo, India, Papa, Coin. Bipcoin is a new cryptocurrency that you can start mining today for free on ordinary computers. Unlike most altcoins, Bipcoin is not a clone of Bitcoin. Bipcoin is based on entirely new, more recent, and better code called CryptoNote. So unlike Bitcoin, Bipcoin has truly untraceable transactions, does not require specialized mining rigs, and has adaptive limits. Plus, Bipcoin is the only cryptocurrency covered by the Bipcot no government license. This allows use and reuse by anyone except governments and government agents. If you're still kicking yourself in the head for not getting in on the ground floor of Bitcoin, start mining, using, and trading Bipcoin today. Not a guarantee. Mining Bipcoin costs you nothing but the electricity to run your computer. And we already take Bipcoin for stickers and buttons. Go to Bipcoin.org. That's Bipcoin.org. Once again, that's Bravo India Papa Coin.org. The only thing I want to say is that there is nothing the government does or claims to do that we, through communal or voluntary action, cannot do for ourselves. Seeds of liberty. Seeds of liberty. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is the 95th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. This week, we are brought to you by Fiend Phone. And as always, we are covered by a Bipcot no government license. This allows reuse by anybody except governments (laughs) and the agents thereof. You can learn more about this at Bipcot.org. So we are back again. I am Jeremy. I am joined, as always, by Dave. And this week, we have a very special guest for us, somebody we have actually been trying to get on this show for almost two years now, our friend Jason Booth from, among other things, other projects, A Wolf in a Sheeple's World on Facebook, pretty big page. What do you guys got? A couple, how many, how many likes you got on that page now? 40 something at this point? I don't Uh, even know. Just just over 42,000. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So yeah. I'm sure a lot of our fans uh, know about that page. Jason's also involved in a lot of other projects. He has also been one of our biggest supporters, um, an, an excellent friend, and the best advertiser we could ever ask for. So Jason, thank you for finally gracing us with your presence, our, my friend. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's good to have you here. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. You guys have been trying to get me on here for a long time, yeah. a long, long, long time. So. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, I poke and poke and poke and poke and poke and poke and poke, and eventually it's like, okay, I'll go. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't have the equipment for the long time, and you know, guys had no, you guys know how shy and you know introvert I am, so it just it took me a while to get used to the idea. That's all. Well, I'm I'm glad we finally got you. We finally convinced you between Dave and I harassing you and some of our other friends bugging the hell out of you to finally say, okay, I'll do it. But it's good to have <laughs> you here, man. Uh, he's he's even started a new show with uh, with uh, Melissa and uh, Mark, yeah. right? Uh, Melissa, Mark Taylor, and uh, Mandy. Mandy's on it. Yeah, um, uh, but yeah. well, Mark, Mark, we Mark Taylor, we just had on a couple of weeks ago from the Voluntary Agrarian. I'm sure people remember yeah. him. And uh, Mandy Silver, we actually we had her on. Gosh, quite a while ago, she was. Uh, yeah, geez, that was a, a year and a half ago at this point. I can't even remember how long ago it's been since we had Mandy on. But Ma- Mandy, <laughs> it was a while back. Yeah, Ma- Mandy's another one of those people who kind of came to us and said that we kind of helped push her over the edge to anarchism, which uh, is always really cool to hear. So, you know, and, and yeah, you guys have started up that new project, which is, and oh, and uh, Derricka Klaus is part of that too, right? Oh yeah, Der- Derricka Klaus. Sorry, I, just, I just, I always say her name right, Derricka Klaus. We had her on too. So yes, yeah, actually. Yeah. I, 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 I am her anarcho daddy. Yes, this her is her words. This is correct. <laughs> so, this is correct. Yeah, we can't we can't forget her. No, 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 we can't. Yeah, so after tonight it'll just be Melissa Rakovich that we still haven't got on the show yet. Everybody everybody else on your show will have been a guest on our show she's, except her. She, she won't come on, man. Oh no, she's coming. Her, like, oh no, no, oh no, she's oh, she is? she's going to come on. Don't worry. She's got okay, the equipment cool. now. She's got the equipment now too. Don't worry. We're going to have her on soon too. She's she's also uh, actually doing a, another project with, I'm excited uh, about that. She's also doing another project with our with our former ho- co-host Danilo. They're doing a peaceful parenting segment now on his show, Peaceful Anarchism, that I think they're going to try to start doing once a month. I believe the uh, not called the non-aggression, non-aggression parenting podcast. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So very exciting stuff. Everybody's keeping busy. So, mm-hmm. but before we get into any other topics, I guess Jason, for the people who don't know you. 
why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself introduce yourself to our fans you know whatever you're willing to share my friend <laughs> no shit um uh, can i cuss or no of course oh okay that, that's good to know that helps no only lot. i'm allowed to cuss on this show i think uh if you uh have been listening to the show for any long time <laughs> you'd know that <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's allowed yeah. to cuss. I just do it a lot less these days because I've programmed myself for being on the radio that I'm not allowed to cuss. Yeah. That you, I've actually caught myself. You'll hear me every once in a while go to start to say a, a curse word and then I'll stop myself and be like, fudge. And it's like, <laughs> oh, you, you're an idiot. You don't have to do that. I'm just, I program myself that way. So. It's too hard. Yeah, it's too hard to keep them ducks in a row. <laughs> you might as well just. Exactly. So <laughs> not cuss. So curse like a sailor if you have to, Jason. But why don't you tell All us right. a, a little bit about your story, whatever you're willing to share, buddy? I don't know. What, what do you guys want to know? Do you guys want to know how I came into volunteerism or do you guys want to sure. know about me? Well, you know, what, like I said, whatever you're willing to share. I mean, it's always nice to hear about your your, your journey and, and what led you here. But if you want to share something else, man, we're not, we're not opposed. You can uh, tell us anything, right. man. Well, it's not like anybody listens right. besides so, you. So it's all good. So like as, as you said, Jeremy, a wolf in a sheeple's world. That's coming up on its fifth anniversary, by the way, March wow. 20th. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's uh, that started under the Ron Paul era, I guess you could say. I'd make Ron Paul my anarchist. It's a day. great title, too. Well, it was like I, it started out as a like a dead a digital representation of my own personality. You know, I yeah. I had I had read this book a few years before I started it, uh, called uh, A Wolf in Wolf's Clothing. I don't know if you guys remember uh, Wicked Jester Clothing. The the guy that ran it, Thorin. Thorin, he wrote a book called The Wolf and Wolf's Clothing. And it's it's all about being an individual, right? To think for yourself, rely on yourself, to not fall under the under the under the grasp of societal norms and, and peer pressures and things like that. And at that same time that I was reading this, I had just started getting like really, really involved in politics. Mm -hmm. And then Ron Paul came out, and Ron Paul was kind of like my my lightning bolt. Just just completely woke me up, and and the, the way things worked out, you know, that's just it, it it felt like a good thing for the page, for a page name because it was supposed to be me. It was a digital representation of my personality, you know. And and I was a wolf. I was an, an independent thinker. Um, I wasn't bowing to societal norms. Kind of self sufficient, relying on myself. I wasn't following the the sheep quote unquote you know the, the sheep you know towards romney or obama or any of the gat stuff and um you know the sheep and then the sheeple's world san francisco oakland bay area that's where i've lived like 30 of my <laughs> 37 years hmm. oh yeah just kind of came yeah, together that's, Wolf uh, the sheeple's world. that's the devil's armpit of leftism <laughs> uh, <laughs> is, is it still leftism after last night at uh, uc berkeley would, uh, uh, well, they're paid, man. Those are all. Well, I, I don't, if you I don't see know. Black and red flags. Most of those guys are paid. They're provocateurs. I, I, I see. Uh -huh. I, I don't know about that. We we discussed this on another show. I think we did, talked about this on Anarchy Ar Action this week about how usually there isn't, or maybe we we may have even touched on this last week. I think there there's usually only a very small percentage of the the people that are actual provocateurs that are getting paid the rest oh, of them the, the rest are of their them, dupes yeah exactly they just follow along bandwagon effect type thing now i did happen oh, to yeah. see that berkeley put out a statement today claiming that it was yeah they were that was, outside yeah it was there was yeah, there was, was about 150 students. masked masked agitators that started everything and then disappeared and then they're the ones who basically set the generator on fire and did all the other crazy stuff and then the other people just kind of follow it along. And I, of course, I read that quickly earlier and it was from CNN.com and I read 150 masked alligators and I was like, well, that makes sense for CNN. I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised, but <laughs> I, I don't really know. I think they're, 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 you know, there probably were agitators there. There, there almost always are these things. And the sad thing is, is a lot of people I know are convinced that if it's an agitator in this situation, it's gotta be like a Soros plant or something. Now that well, that George may be Soros true. son does go to that. I, I know does go to that school. I, I know that, but it, it'd be said about any of these any of these events anywhere. The same thing would be brought up, and it, that may be true. But I, I think staged because Milo was there. I mean, well, who knows? Well, no. Well, well, well the point I was going to make is that I, I think a lot of people overlook the fact that 
it may actually be government provocateurs and not necessarily yeah. Soros. It may just be people with you know factions within the government that just want to keep everybody at each other's throats because well divide and conquer has worked so goddamn well for so many fucking oh. centuries that yeah. why not keep going with what works no uh, yeah. you don't change the, the the you don't change what works yeah with, with society as it is now and the connection that people have via social media a lot of these people that are in these sort of the movements right the sort of the the Black Lives Matter, the feminist, the black bloc, going back to Occupy Wall Street even before that, a lot of these people that that participate in these sort of things have no idea what is really going on. There's there's a small percentage of people that through some sort of, you know, personality or some sort of arrogance or some sort of uh something that attracts people to them, all it takes is oh. is a few you know, a, a few words or, or a gesture and the people that follow them, the people that blindly support them will literally go jump off a bridge for these people. You know, like with Occupy, there was a few people that really understood what was going on. And then everybody else that was there <laughs> was there because it was the Confused. cool thing to do. Right. They were there yeah. because it was, you know, it was it was the, it was the cool thing. It was the hip thing. It was what the people that they looked up to were doing. Sure. Well, yeah, and that, you said you that, lived in the Oakland area. Uh, I'm right? about 30 miles east of Oakland. Well, the, all of the, I'll tell you a story back in like the seventies and the sixties, when all those major communist groups were popping up in uh, California, 75% of them, of the people in most of these groups were CIA plants. They were so compartmentalized and whitewashed. If you look up those two words, you'll understand what I just said that they none of them knew that they were all CIA. So like that's how bad they're in these groups. So that's why like it, I think it's imperative that you know when someone's telling everyone hey like hey we all agree to this idea we should collectivize up and do violence and destroy property and stuff like those people you should shy away from. Absolutely. Well yeah and and, and the point well the point you were making Jason about how everybody just kind of you know they're just kind of looking up to the I guess the the leaders they follow or whatever you know whatever the, all the cool kids are doing I mean here in New York that became readily apparent when you watch the any of the interviews that Peter Schiff uh, uh, did while he was there when he went down there and asked questions and like the deer in headlights look of these people they had no idea like he was just asking them basic questions and they had no clue what was going on they were just either directly told or heard through the grapevine that they're supposed to be railing against Wall Street. You know, it's always this vague idea. Oh, Wall Street, we're taking on Wall Street. What does that even mean? Do you have any idea what that means? <laughs> well, the big the bad corporations. Road, Jeremy, are they gonna are well, they gonna go off the roads over well, there? Well, Wall they, Street, the actual road. Well, in New York, that's what they did. I mean, they tried to block off Wall Street. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so and, the commies were trying to to stop public access to a public road. That doesn't seem. That doesn't, that well, doesn't no. check out to me. And then they got shifted to the parks, and then they got tossed out of the parks, yeah. and, and then it was just a big mess. But that was the thing. Like when you watch those interviews, that I mean, other people did them too, but the Peter Schiff ones were hysterical because it oh, was they either were. they had they either had no he idea. Had a sign that said, "I'm the one percent," right? <laughs> yeah, and they either had no idea why they were there, or even if they had some vague idea where they were there. Once he got past that level and got into like economic questions, they were completely clueless. They had no idea about anything when it came to economics they were just like all oh, the rich the rich like the buzzwords that's what they used because that's what that's all they know and it was just i mean and there was just there were so many people there but on the flip side of that there were a lot of people there that kind of realized after a while hey nobody knows what the fuck they're doing here maybe this isn't the right idea because i've met <laughs> quite a number of people who came out of that movement and are now anarchists and not in the you know crazy commie want to blow everything up way. antifa yeah they're you know yeah. like i i have a, i have quite a number of friends who were there and were admitted leftists at the time and they just kind of figured it's out pissing me off oops not the right drudge report mm. what about the drudge report well, every time every time well every time these black flag or black and red flag or these antifa people do anything it's the the headline anarchists create blah 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 and it's like that's not anarchy, like at all. No, no. I have spent a lot of time defending anarchy, and those are those are not. I, it anarchists. might be just a dead meme, man. We might just have to move on. 
I don't know. It's, about it's also that. one of those, one of the reasons I don't use anarchy anymore. I use volunteerist. Tell us how, how you came down that road, man. Oh boy, do we have enough time? <laughs> All right, I think we have enough time. <laughs> so it, it's it's kind of a weird one. I uh, I, I was very very depressed for uh quite a few for quite a few years. Uh, my mom had passed, and I was the last one to talk to her. I'm the one that found her in the morning, and uh, and that that really that really messed me up. And I was very depressed for a long time. And about 2010, she died in like like 2000 like 2010. One of my nights, like 2 a.m., I couldn't sleep, and uh, watching the news, and there was there was some story on about the Middle East or something, and I remember thinking, that's wrong, that that's not the way it should be, and I ended up jumping on the computer and did like four hours of research, just on on this one set. I don't remember the, what the subject was. I ended up, I remember sitting on the computer for four hours doing nothing but reading, and the next day. I jump on the computer and I went to go look it up and then something else came up and then something else came up and then something else came up and it just (laughs) for like a month, all I did all day long, all my free time, all I did was, was read things on the internet, research, uh, you know, storylines and, and the war and, and, and the, the suicide numbers and nine 11 and just all this other stuff. And I became very, very, very angry. Uh, hmm. I ended up I ended up being on a uh, admining on a couple like three percenter pages and dumped all those in early 2012 with uh when Ron Paul and started Wolf and then uh, that was that was a fun one Romney and Obama and you're advocating for Ron Paul there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of, there's a lot of hate and death threats on that one oh sure and then I started reaching out a little bit uh, started talking to more libertarians. And then uh, I ran into a few anarchists, but they weren't. They were they were also very angry, but they weren't saying things that I that I that that made sense to me. You know, they were they were, yeah. and they, then the guy ended up becoming an ancom. Mm. <laughs> he ran, ran ran one of the biggest pages that I've ever seen, like three hundred fifty thousand, and just flips it and becomes an ancom. Wow. Ugh. Yeah, completely blew me. Completely blew me. Away. He's there in New Jersey. Completely blew me away. Mm. And. uh well, now, do you think he actually did he actually become an ancom, or is it one of those things that he was lying in wait to be able to switch when he got? Because I I know a lot of people who have actually done that. They kind of lie in wait till they get a certain amount of people. Then it's just like, oh, by the way, here you go. <laughs> well, he was he was a very pro military, uh, and okay. then and then got very angry about government and became an ancom. And now they actually are down near the uh, Blue Ridge Liberty Project. Oh, okay. Well, they're living down there with those wow. people. Okay, well, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, the one thing I wanted to ask you, though, you because you, uh, this is something that, uh, I mean, I know I've talked about, about myself a lot, but you mentioned the anger that you went through. Now, was that directed at anyone or anything in particular, or was it just a, an anger that you couldn't necessarily place? You were just mad about what's going on. Oh, I was angry at everything. Mm. Everybody and everything. Uh, is mad at is, yourself for being duped. <laughs> oh, I was mad at myself for being duped. I was mad at my brother for joining the military. I was mad at the government. I was mad at status. I was mad at police. I was mad at, you know, postal carriers. I would flip, I would flip off the mail delivery guy when he walked by. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. I mean, I was, I was real angry for a long time. And, That's how you uh, say hello to government workers though. But yeah, isn't there a, a, mailman exception now to the bip cut well it's it's up to you if you want to make an exception you can still flip off the mailman i don't give a rat's ass man. yeah I'm not, I'm not angry i'm not angry anymore i don't flip people off unless they earn it oh and then uh let's see about you know i started i started wolf and i ran it to just over ten thousand people in the first year that was uh that was the last year of the of the uh, uh, last year before the algorithm algorithms for Facebook, mm. right? So everybody mm. saw every, everybody saw every post I made. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I miss I miss those times. <laughs> I I really do too. <laughs> well, heck, we never even got and, to experience uh, those times. Well, at least not with our page, Dave. We started after the algorithms took over. We didn't. We never even oh, got no, that. No. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> let's see. Obama got reelected, and then. Uh, I, I started reaching out, you know, to to other libertarian pages, and and I started sharing some of their stuff more, 
and just kind of putting myself out there a little bit more. But I, I was still, I was still so hungry for for reading, and I was still so angry. You know, it, it was a weird time, man. It was just a really weird time. I was so confused, and it went so fast. And then uh, early well, two 2000- thousand, you in the chest. What punched me in my chest? Everything. The government punched me in my chest. Everything. Just like every law, every article I read, uh, I, I found something to be angry about hmm. in literally <laughs> everything. Uh, I, I wouldn't know what that's like at all. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about my my constant state. Oh, yeah, I was going to no. say you're talking. You're talking to the the perpetual angry young man here. Um, well, I, I I asked that the the question originally because I was just curious because I I went through something similar and I've I've discussed this before. But for me, what I realized after about a year or so of really ratcheting up my anger and just lashing out at everybody and everything was when I took a step back and realized. Wow, the number of people in my circles has diminished greatly because I've pissed off just about everybody. And then I actually had to sit and take a long, hard look at myself and realized, yeah, I was angry. Um, I've always been angry. Now I had additional things to be angry about, but that <laughs> ang- that self anger, that in, you know, that internal anger, I really realized that that was actually where most of my issues were. I wasn't mad at other people. I was most pissed off at myself for allowing myself to be duped like that and going along with these things and being one of those crazy fuckers that after 9-11 was screaming at the top of his lungs that the entire Middle East needed to be turned into a parking lot. And I meant it, you know, like I was, I meant it too. I was so (laughs) fucking angry at myself. And the only thing I knew how to do was just lash out. And I, oh, yeah. I kind of went into hiding for a while after that and realized, oh, crap, I really fucked up here because I pissed off a lot of people. I probably not necessarily shouldn't have, but I didn't have to. And that's when I, I kind of shifted gears and was like, fuck, man, I, I wasted all that energy. I, I'm really just angry at me and I need to fix me. <laughs> I need to make me better. I need I need to understand these things. And that's when We're my make learning Jeremy great again. Exactly. And that's when my you know, that's when my learning process really started when I had, when I had that self, when I had that reflection and I was like, Oh, you're an idiot, man. <laughs> like anger is one thing. Yeah. You're always going to be angry, but to direct it at other people when you're really just mad at yourself is so counterproductive. <laughs> no, see, I was, I was just, I was so depressed for so long that it had to transition into something and I mm-hmm. became angry. I was, I was angry and depressed. So uh, <laughs> it was not a good, combo. not a bet, not a good combo. Like right about that time, I started learning more about anarchy and started reading some things, and I got I got angry, but in a different sort of anger. You know, in- mm-hmm. instead of being angry at the world, I was angry at myself, and then I was angry at the government and uh, depression. And it's just all right. Here's okay, and then uh, this this is where it, this is <laughs> this is the hard one right here. All right, we're gonna and have then, a Doctor uh, Phil here, a Doctor Phil moment here, folks. Oh, uh, this Come is on. it's Doc it's Doctor Phil. Let it out. Just let Let's it out. It. Okay. And then, uh, like, January 2015, I was coming up on my 35th birthday. And, uh, oh, my God, dude, it was just, it was so depressing. So depressing to think that I was 35 years old and I'm single, I'm alone, I'm angry, I'm pissed off at the world, pissed off at government, and there's nothing I can do about any of it. And and I was on my edge, you know. I was thinking about checking out, and uh, yeah, and just out of nowhere, like I, I had talked to uh, you guys both know Sarah, and I I had talked to Sarah, Sarah on occasion. Tip- which Sarah Tipton? Sarah Tipton. Yes. Yeah. From uh, yeah. what, um, what does she write for? Uh, the Truth About Guns, right? That's one of the Truth About Guns. Yes. Yeah. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah. love Sarah. I, lo- I love her uh, her outlook on things and her her perspective on stuff. It's really great. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I, I had, I had talked to her when she was running a, a libertarian page, and right at, just out of nowhere, like two or three days before my birthday, and I, I was, like I said, I was on the edge. I was thinking about checking out, and she messaged me out of nowhere. Hey, how you doing? Oh, okay, all right. So we messaged back and forth a little bit, and then it just, it kind of progressed. Like every every single day, we were talking a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And we started talking politics and life and, and music and, and movies. And just her paying attention to me, just her caring, 
totally saved my life. Wow. No, it you it. I'm not joking. She oh, no, literally I, saved my life I, 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 just I, by just by paying attention to me. I I I I, I wasn't saying that wow as if it was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I was just saying wow, that's that's amazing yeah. because I, I I've gone through points of my life where I I too thought about. I mean, this was long ago. I I've been so angry ever since that I just wanted to piss off everybody else rather than take myself out. But I went through periods of time in my life where I seriously considered doing the same, and it is it it's. I guess yeah. I mean, you look at it, if you look back at it. I guess that's like one of those lucky breaks. Like, what if she hadn't messaged you then that day, type of thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, absolutely, I wouldn't be here doing this. Well, Sarah, I hope you listen to this. And God damn it, I am fucking glad that you reached out to Jason that day because uh, <laughs> I, and, uh, I, I I have told you this before, but well, before you go on, I just I've told you this before, buddy. Like, I'm very happy that you are out there, and uh, I, I really wish we had more people like you out there. So uh, Sarah did really good by keeping you around. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I do weird things like that too, man. I just find people that I notice like posting trends that they'll have, and I'll just notice anyone that has any kind of like, um, I don't know, dismay or, or, or depression going on. I'll just message them and be like, hey, you got this. You're the best, and that's it. <laughs> You oh, should. You would be really mm-hmm. surprised what happens. Oh uh, yeah, I, I do that now too, Dave. I didn't at the time. Like I like I said, I was on the edge, and and she saved me just by by talking to me. And at that same time, I had started discovering voluntarism, and she had started discovering Buddhism. You know, through through meditation and 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 positive thinking and and all these other things. Mm-hmm. Um, she was able to become a more positive person and see the silver lining and everything and just become a generally happier person. And she inspired me to, to learn some of the stuff that, that she was going through that she was learning. And that helped me become a positive person at the same time that I was learning voluntarism. And we kind of, kind of melded these two things, right? That the voluntarism and the Buddha, Buddhism and the positive thinking and, it was it was like a light switch. Like uh, it took like five or six months, but it was mm-hmm. a light. It was like a light switch. I I completely changed who I was through learning about voluntarism, learning about self ownership, learning about peaceful parenting, and mm-hmm. and coexistence with my fellow man, while learning to be a more positive person, to have a more positive mm-hmm. outlook, to to see the silver lining on everything. It. it- it's amazing. You, it, when you get, when you finally wake up to the deception, and it is statism is a deception. Socialism Absolute. is a deception. It is, okay? it is a mental disease. And when you finally wake up to it, you go, "Holy shit! This is basically a cult." And like, you want to reject that and get far away from it. it. Just like if you woke, like woke up to the whole Amish thing. Like if you just got out and was like, "Holy crap!" Like there's more to life than this Amish thing. Yes, you know, absolutely. Like, like Neo in the Matrix, right? Once, once you come out of that illusion, right? Once, once the facade comes down, and and you realize, you realize that the the size of the illusion and the the amount of brainwashing and indoctrination that you were under, phenomenal. You either become a, an incredibly positive person or you become an incredibly negative person. And, I think and it's the, a phase, the, people. Yeah, well, go through. <sighs> As some did you have an phase angry phase after you like? Time. Did you have what, a super what, angry phase after you voluntarism, or was it all positive? No, I, I have been, I have not had a angry, uh, voluntary phase at all. I was angry when I still called myself an anarchist, like literally all of 2014. I was an angry, angry anarchist. But since I've learned about voluntarism and call myself a voluntarist, I have not had that angry phase at all. You don't have to go through that. Once, most of the time, <laughs> but that uh, the, uh, the angry anarchist phase. I mean, we've talked about that plenty on here because the heck, I went to. That's what I was talking about before. I had that just year of just blind hatred yeah. for everybody and everything, <laughs> and oh. I just i i i was uh. lo- i was actively looking for fights with anybody i i talked to. I just yeah, I wanted I, to give them I information, a- and if they didn't want to accept it or they couldn't like make sense of it logically and they just looked at me kind of funny. I just wanted, I was like, you're an idiot. What's wrong with you? I'm giving you the information. Why don't you get this? And yeah, it's, 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 it does seem to be fairly common. I mean, I, I've noted that it, it, it tends to happen with the younger crowd a lot. 
mm-hmm. you know, the, the younger people who come to anarchism. Uh, but it's not it's not just them because I mean I I've said before I came to the party kind of late because you know like you I was already past my thirties before I started finally started to put all this stuff together, <laughs> and uh, you know it's it, so it's not exclusive to the younger crowd but it happens a lot and just people just get angry and they and I think like I said before I, I think a lot of people don't realize that it's just misplaced anger that they are actually angry at themselves but they don't they either can't recognize that or they don't want to admit it and just like anything else it's so much easier to lash out on somebody else than it is to do any kind of self-examination you know so oh yeah uh, you know they, yeah. They, they say they say we are our own worst enemy mm-hmm. and uh when when you realize you know that the the government is a lie and that all this is bs and that statism is wrong and you have to fill that that hole with something and a lot of people react emotionally and they become hateful and angry instead of mm. becoming positive. I know I did for a while. For a long time I did. I just had a lot of hate in my heart for humanity and other humans uh-huh. still do for their just it just the ability for us to get duped so easily is mind blowing. I think that's the the goal is to make undupable people. <laughs> you can't I, dupe anybody, you know. No. Nope. Pro- propaganda is a powerful tool, and the government has uh, perfected the use of it. This is very true. Well, the state the state's going to use anything they can to control everything they can. Yeah, but I, I don't. I mean, I, I've said before, I, I I don't think they really even have to apply themselves very much anymore. People oh, are out there yeah. doing it to themselves because the programming has been so complete over all these years that just generations upon generations upon generations of people now just can't even fathom a different way of life like the whole idea no. that government exists government has always existed it's not even up for discussion you know that's the starting point for so many people and has been for a very long time so yeah i'm i'm sure that the actors within the government still tweak when necessary and still you know uh fan the flames when they have to but it's largely out of their hands at this point you know, there's that one there's that one line that that allegedly came from the CIA director back in the late seventies, William something or other. I forget what the guy's name was. Uh, to this Binny. day, w- was it William Binney? He wasn't the head of the CIA, was he? I know Binney was a whistleblower. Yeah, uh, you're right. You're right. Uh, but he was he was uh, there was another guy, whoever the guy was that who was in charge of the CIA back in the late seventies, which I guess would be right before Bush. Because wasn't Bush the head of the head of the Herbert CIA? Was there for he was only he was the head of the Carter CIA for one for Reagan. one year. No, I believe he was only actually the head for one year, and it was right before Reagan, right before he right before he became Reagan's running mate. So I'm thinking it was seventy nine, eighty somewhere, some seventy nine, maybe I don't remember. Anyway, was Reagan's who, handler, who whoever was right before him, <laughs> or whoever was right right before that time frame. There's a quote that often gets thrown around with the guy's picture, too, and I, I just can't remember his name right now. I've never been able to prove the accuracy of this quote, but it, you know, it's the one that says the, our, our, basically our mission will be complete when everything the American public believes is untrue. And you know, like I said, I've never been able to prove the accuracy of that, but it makes sense with everything else yeah. that we know about the government and what's been going on for however many years that they are beyond more than beyond capable of making that happen well yeah a, a lie told enough times becomes the truth well yeah not fa- not fact and that's why the earth is truth. flat right jason oh yeah it's on a giant turtle hur- hurtling through space hey i like the turtle <laughs> theory man uh- <laughs> <laughs> it's turtles all the way down the line that's that's um yes. that's a great song yes well, now, see, it's funny. Now, now that we're talking about this, this actually makes me think of something else I was reading today uh, about the Mandela effect. Now, I, I'm, I'm sure most, oh, of yeah. our, most of our listeners know what the Mandela effect is. For anybody who doesn't, Dave, you're, you're pretty good at explaining this. Would you uh, care to give a quick definition uh, of it? For it was built off of uh, this. Uh, basically, people think something happens and then it doesn't happen that way. Like the meme that gets caught off of a, an idea that everyone just like society just accepts to use this based off of something it isn't what is really happens like uh, life is like a box of chocolates it's actually life was like a box of chocolates but like everyone telling everyone else is 
reinforces this thing that like the the phrase was life is like a box of chocolates but that's not what it was yeah and the, and you know, it's, so it started with it's nelson just a Man mimetic repetition fallacy is essentially what it is yeah but it, it's named such because it started with nelson mandela because there's yeah, a they lot thought he was dead there's a lot of people that had convinced themselves that he died in prison and that he never got out which of course is not true he did he, he not only got out didn't he become the 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 the, the guy prime in minister. charge yeah became the prime minister of south, of south africa yeah. after all that happened but mm -hmm. so many people convince themselves of that the reason i bring it up though and it's interesting that you brought up that forrest gump reference because i was just re i just stumbled across some of this stuff today because i saw somebody posting yesterday about ed mcmahon and the publishers clearing house sweepstakes and yeah you know jason you probably remember this better than dave is because we're both a little older no no him. i remember it clearly. well yeah but back back in the back in the 80s or actually Publishers Clearinghouse was going on for even longer than that, but there was there was this company, and I think they're actually still around today. And they have the Prize Patrol, where they send people out, and you know, you if you order the the whole people, a lot of people thought it was a scam because it was basically, oh, you're you can you know if you, if you fill out this form, you're entered into the sweepstakes, and you can win a million dollars. But they're they were trying to hawk magazine sales. And most people had convinced themselves, even though they swore, you you know, one of those things, you don't have to purchase anything in order to enter the contest. It, they made it very apparent to people that they had a much better chance of winning if they yeah. subscribe for some magazines yeah. too. So people were doing this all the time. But somebody posted the other day asking about Ed McMahon in this because apparently this has now become a new thing in the Mandela Effect line where people have convinced themselves that Ed McMahon was the spokesperson for Publishers Clearinghouse. Now, when I started to go, because I, when as soon as I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, I remember Ed McMahon doing commercials. Like, I definitely remember him doing commercials for some type I of thing him in like big that. Checks. Yes, and the big checks. Mm -hmm. Now, according to what I, everything I found out yesterday, he and Dick Clark were actually spokespeople for this organization called American Family Publishers, which started yeah. in the early '80s to be a or the late '70s to be a competitor to the Publishers Clearinghouse. And that yeah. people had confused these things. But when I dug into this further, and I saw a couple other people writing about this today, there seems to be a growing list of these things that may not actually be true. And I saw somebody write about this today. I wanted to get your guys' thoughts about this. That a lot of these things, especially when it comes to movie lines like the mate, like uh, like the life was like a box of chocolates from Forrest Gump, or lines from the Matrix or stuff like like movie lines, you can actually go back and look. And some of the things they're talking about, supposedly being Mandela effects, these new claims of no, that's not the way this happened. You people are remembering it wrong. When you actually dig back on it, it's like no, wait a minute, I actually have proof of this. Like I own the original, the VHS tape or whatever it is, or like I own the paper, the newspaper from this time frame where this, like I can see this, what's going on. And now the theory <laughs> is getting posited that I saw a couple times today and I, I found it kind of interesting that the, you know, the powers that be have done such a great job at controlling the narratives over the years that they are now actually effectively gaslighting people by convincing them <laughs> that they haven't that they, they're remembering things incorrectly and because, well, they control most of the media and stuff like that, they can go back and change all this stuff so there's no record of it. And I found what that kind of- What if I told of, you this was a 4chan thing? What, that, that that theory is a 4chan thing? No, 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 the whole Mandela thing. That started from 4chan? I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> no, no, like that, that it's being perpetuated and continuated daily all day on 4chan. I would people find it. weird things to meme and Photoshop and then that Photoshop gets like completely spread. People take that and run it and then the meme builds from there and then the whole they it's a contest to see how many people can get duped. <laughs> well, see now, believe, now that's, that. that's basically all the Mandela effect is. Well, to an extent, yes, but be, it started with Mandela, and we know for a fact the motherfucker didn't die in prison. So that one you can't the one that was gotten that, me. That one can't be explained. Is, that one cannot be explained by 4chan. Billy Graham is the only one that's gotten me. I don't know the one about Billy Graham. What's that one? He's still alive. The Reverend Billy Graham? Yeah, I thought he's dead like years ago. 
I I could have sworn I'm on, on my life. Okay, I'm on I'm on board with you on that one. I thought Billy Graham was dead too. <laughs> I could have sworn on my life. If you would have asked me, is Billy Graham dead? I would have need because my I remember my mother calling me and crying for like an hour that Billy Graham was dead. Like I care. Yeah, I and thought, I was like, I thought Franklin was now the big face of it because Billy wasn't around anymore. No, Billy Billy's ninety eight years old and he's still alive. <laughs> he's still, we may have he's still we, alive. We, Jeremy, we may have hopped timelines. Trump may have uh, be a time traveler, like I said. Oh, no, the fucking Biff Tannen by the time traveling Trump. Not again, (laughs) man. This whole thing could be real. I mean, (laughs) Trump wins. Mandela effect shit pops up. I don't know. We may have swapped timelines. Well, that was one of the take off this giant hat and put on a tinfoil hat for this conversation. Well, that was one of the theories I saw getting positive. You need lead, okay? You're going to need lead. (laughs) At at this point, if all this, if with all the crazy stuff that's going on, I may just start eating lead again. Maybe it's just not even worth it. I don't know. (laughs) I'm I'm thinking about uh, uh, starting up a lead paint company or something like that and selling lead paint because there's a secret reason why it was banned. No one knows. It wasn't because kids were eating paint chips or it was giving anybody diseases. I mean. It was because satellites couldn't look down into people's houses and spy on them 24-7. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's why they ban lead paint. Now, so I've, I'm thinking if you just paint your ceilings with lead paint, can you get good. some? Can you get some, uh, after the show, nope, maybe? Do you nope, have any information to, on this that you could? Uh, people I, have I, to do their own research with Dave here, okay? <laughs> okay, see, now this, see, Dave, <laughs> it's when a you say. me wrong thing. No, when you say things like that, Dave, you got to give at least people a starting point because I'd love to look into that because I actually still. Google.com. Okay, we'll Dave, help you out. and then f- just from there, Dave, you, you realize just- you realize that when that's your response to somebody asking you questions, most people are going to disregard you. <laughs> I don't know. I read it. I read it on some articles. It take me a minute. I, you, do you want me to find something? Not, not right now. I'm saying for like maybe after the show, if you come across anything, kick that's, it my way. That's we'll, definitely we'll that's definitely interesting. I want to look into that. Well, myself. yeah, because I would definitely like to look into it because I own a home that still has lead paint in it, and it's on my ceiling. Yeah. Because yeah. I live in one of the original Levitt houses that was built in the forties, America's first suburb, America's first suburb, supposedly, and uh, I have I have lead paint still on my ceiling. I was told when I bought the house that in order for me to remove it, which would now this could just be coincidence, but it would go along with that scam the way you're describing it because it's a ridiculous amount amount of money they charge to re- not to remove lead paint because there's a special process they want you to go through. You have to check with like mm-hmm. OSHA and all this other crap. You have to go like in order to, to, to get rid of these things, like the amount of money they wanted to charge me to repaint my ceiling. I was just like, all right, you know what? I'm just not going to let my kids eat the paint and we'll be all good. And that's what we did. <laughs> so I never changed it. But that would be very interesting because it's already there. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, but just think about the future of policing and everything. They've already got stuff that they can look through and see through walls and everything, the heat signatures and everything. So imagine what, like, the like people. Well, according to what I learned on, are going to be lead lining things in the future. That's going to be a big, um, well, you know, market. Again, it's, I guess anything's possible. I mean, from what I learned from Alex Jones yesterday by listening to the Joe Rogan show, is that you know there was already drones back in World War II. Apparently, yeah, um, of course. You know. Radio. As soon as radio technology happened, so if they if they already had that stuff out that that far back, you know that type of technology, why wouldn't they have other stuff and know and be planning ahead for the future and saying, oh, well, we already have like you know they obviously already had satellites at a certain point. It's like, well, we already have this stuff. What can we do with it next? <laughs> well, you know they're trying to uh, the, the 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 super duper 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 conspiracy is that they're trying to open up uh, the. The pit of hell under CERN, and so so Ball can come to this earth and take it over and start the biblical apocalypse. Uh, I, I have, <laughs> where, where is this? So where, the, where the theory it? is that every time they activate CERN, that they're 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 able to mess with the timeline. That's I'm, all. This I'm drawing Mandela a blank at the moment. What is happening. CERN? What are you talking about? The CERN, the the the, he, the Lord yes. Hedron. Oh, the the, and, the, and, the, the, the the collider. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. See, I hadn't heard about the the hell. I hadn't heard about the the pit of hell. You have thing. to learn. You have to learn all this esoteric knowledge of there being three gates to hell. <laughs> I did and not go down stuff. that path. I, although I have heard a couple of theories floated that a lot of weird things that people are all complaining about all kind of didn't start until after they opened that thing up. <laughs> and when was that? When yeah, did that? When got, did the super collider get open? Level. 
When did that? Uh, when did that when man, did... I'm way deeper than this, Jason. I don't. I just oh, don't yeah. let it out on the seas of liberty. <laughs> we, we we try to we start to stay surface level here. Oh yeah, he's he he he's got wild conspiracies coming out of all ends of it. The stuff that I've heard from Dave is I, insane. I, I think you got to take all these conspiracies with a grain of salt, but it is fun to to play them out. You know, that's the thing. Oh, it's fun to play them out because it's like holy shit, maybe that is. Or, oh my god, they're they're definitely food for thought, and they're definitely there. There has to be some truth to some of it, right? I mean, we we all know yeah, that the even government ten percent of it's real. It's scary. <laughs> yeah, we we all know that the government's up to some shady stuff. So. If if even one percent of all the conspiracies are true, it's worth exploring the other ninety nine percent. Well, uh, yes and no. I I get where you're coming <laughs> from. Well, no, no. I just I get where you're coming from. But going back to something else we were talking about a little earlier about how you know the government deception. Well, actually, I guess we've basically been talking about the whole time. Uh, you know, there is quite a bit of evidence that. A lot of the theor the the more insane theories that get dumped out or these days are yeah are psyops, and so I get what you're saying that because there is this percentage that, and and again this isn't just like you know tinfoil hat talking stuff like I mean how many so called conspiracy theories from the past can you now look back on and say oh nope now there's definite proof of that you know like all of the things oh, the more, government's been up to yeah. from like the oh, like paperclip and Northwoods yeah, the, and, yeah the, the, there's a, a, there's a stack a of lot of them the Tuskegee the, the Tuskegee experiments all that stuff oh they, those were all conspiracy theories in their day the government oh, would never do don't, that don't no the government started on this the government definitely did fucking shove fucking civil syphilis into those fucking poor well, airmen uh, there's a there's <laughs> a really good article on that from Ranker. they signed up bro no they got drafted never mind oh yeah oh yeah no 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 no. they didn't volunteer for that fucking project i had to stop myself for a second <laughs> they absolutely <laughs> I did apologize not volunteer to those for this fucking project actually i think i think one of our i think one of our friends slaves. john i apologize i, I could have swore our, uh, our our friend john said his one of his relatives was in that program didn't he tell us that at one point jason or might remember uh, I don't know. Uh, I think might, so. You might have been joking with us. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, who, who knows with John? John's a funny dude. But yeah, but but I mean, there's all of these things that have now been proven. And at the time, they were considered conspiracy theories and people were thought to be crazy if they even considered these ideas. But as, as, it, as it can also be proven by just looking at the government timeline, there's a reason that declassification for a lot of these documents and a lot of this stuff is set for like 25 to 50 years. You know, some stuff comes out sooner, but a lot of it manages mm -hmm. to get declassified for a really long time underneath, of course, the, oh, the banner of quote unquote national security. But when well, it finally knew, comes, destroy us. Yeah. But <laughs> when it finally comes out. It's so no far past that even people who might have been interested in it are kind of just like, oh, that was then. This is now. It's different people. Anybody now. that would have the emotional an, enough emotional response to do anything about it is dead or so, dying or whatever. You know, yeah, or dying. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. That definitely happens with some things. Uh, JFK's uh, all of the stuff that the government knows about JFK supposedly is supposed to be released in October this year. So. It should be a fun. This year should just be the most fun year ever, in my opinion, for learning secrets. I, I think that WikiLeaks. Trump, I just think Trump's going to let it all show well, because the more that comes out his first year that he fixes, the better he looks. And I think he's going to try to open up those floodgates and, and, and let as much out as he can. I just have this weird suspicion. I just really do call it a gut feeling. Yeah, but if okay, well, let's take the JFK thing for example, because I, I I knew it was coming up soon. I didn't know it was this year, but if October, yeah, if well, because yeah, it's been it's what when when when, would he, when was he killed? 63, 64? 69? No, sixty three, sixty four. Was he shot? I can't remember. I think it was sixty three. Uh, sixty three. No, yeah. I was asking the years. I think it's almost seven years. I don't know. No, no, he, no. I'm saying when was he no, killed? No, when was he killed? Years. He was killed. Yeah, he was killed no, in sixty three. So he was it, born uh, uh, November November nineteen sixty three. Yeah, thank you. So he so that it happened fifty four years ago now. Well, it'll be fifty four years on the date, I guess. But so it's yeah. right around that time. But let me ask you this: If what the majority of people who don't trust the government on that story believe to be true is true, that there are factions of the government involved in his, directly involved in his death. Do you really think they would let that out now 
just because there are that many people who still strongly disable, disbelieve what the government, like well, of the other things in the past I, that happened, it's one thing, but that's taking, something that's I'm taking still, all my assumptions off. Well, how, how, long, how long did it take for them to get uh, the information out about the government killing um, uh, Martin Luther King? Um, well, what, that the, the was, well the forty years. Well, yeah, it was over forty, 40 because the the civil trial that happened, where it supposed in that trial allegedly they said that it was definitely. I guess they said it was factions of the government. It was a civil trial that Coretta fought, that Coretta was involved in. That was ninety nine, I think nineteen ninety nine. That that case happened. I think is right. Um. So that was again. It was in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. It was no. It was, I'm almost positive it was ninety nine, and. And again, that's something, I mean, I've seen memes about me made about that before, but it's like, does anybody remember that this actually happened? Like nobody seems to even know that it's like, oh yeah, by yeah. the way, we, we, we announced this now, you know, when they say stuff like that, there's been plenty of other things that conspiracy theorists run on where they claim that the government because of a court case has actually declared one thing. But then when you actually go read the case, it doesn't exactly say that people have just extrapolated and then I a lot of times essentially started their own a Mandela effect on it and just be like, no, this is the truth. This is what it says right there. And then everybody else just continues to believe it because <laughs> half the people don't go bother to read these documents themselves. They just go, well, if all these other people read it and saw it, it must be true. Yep. So yeah, prop propaganda. Yeah. Powerful tool. So I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of excited to see what they actually put out come that come October. But, you know, if, say, the 28 pages are any kind of indication, I think there's going to be some still be oh. huge gaping holes that don't actually make oh, it to the so fucking sad. public. There's so there, there's so much data dumping going right on right now by the FBI, the CIA and all these other people. They're just flooding everyone with uh, quote unquote release documents, just secret documents. They're just, I don't get it. Like It's going to take everyone a while to pick through these. Well, that's why. It just happened this week. Well, of course. Ma massive dumps are, are how they hide shit. Because who has the yeah. time to go through that? And well, anybody yeah, who takes... Yeah, the hive mind does. But anybody who, ha anybody who takes that time to go through, sift through all that information runs a very good risk of going insane in the process just from sense <laughs> no no I'm, I'm not i'm not trying to like make a joke or anything you, you from just from sensory overload yeah. from from rifling through all that information that by the time they come to the so-called smoking gun they're going to look like a fucking loon when they come to the public and say see i found it here it is yeah, oh, yeah. it's what it takes is it takes like 10 15 20 lawyers sitting in a room like just completely going every over every word that's that's what usually happens, and there's huge advocacy groups that are going through all this stuff right now. That are just every day, it's like a job. There, billionaires want to look through all this stuff because there could be corporate secrets in there and stuff. And there's a lot of stuff going on in the background right now that no one knows. But I I'm pointing 2017, the year that everyone finds out everything. <laughs> there there are all, people are only going to find out what other people want them to find out. Well, yeah, no, nobody's. Yeah, nobody's going to release anything super top secret. Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, in, in, who knows? In, 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 unless if, the if if they do, if they do, it will be to discredit Trump or something, something like that. Nobody of any real power is going to out themselves. Yeah, it'll always be someone down the bottom. Well, that in, was, unless that whole unless that whole Mandela effect thing that's floating around right now is true, and that is somebody on the inside trying to let people know. That's why. That's why I just found that interesting when I read that. I'm like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. What if there was somebody on the inside saying, "Hey, all this stuff's being changed, but now I'm doing stuff that you can l easily go back and check is wrong," and, and so people will go, "Wait a minute." Why are they promoting that this wasn't the way things really happened when I have the proof in my hand right now? That's really weird. Like that's the theory that's that I saw getting floated around that there's basically mm -hmm. somebody on the inside helping with these stories that is purposely putting stuff out that you can actually pick up a DVD or a book or a newspaper and go, no, wait a minute, it's right here. Like, well, it's for clickbait, dude. It's for you got to think about clickbait as well. Like I, I've made my own Mandela effect, I think a, a few times and put it out there and. I've seen people repeat it that weren't even on the site that I've put it out, man. So trust me, like sometimes it's for the lulls. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> it really is. Well, that's why. You would, that's why you. That's why when you asked if you thought some it, people want to watch the world burn, Jeremy. 
believe it or well, not. Uh, well, Dave, I'm, I'm one of those people. Um, <laughs> I, I have no problem sitting back and watching everybody burn themselves to the fucking ground. Uh, you know, if they want to be stupid like that, go for it. But I, I but that's w- when you asked earlier if what if, you know, what if this is just a, something that started on 4chan? I wouldn't put it past them because I, I see that as a possibility that this is just being done for the lulls. I mean, I still contend that the flat earth thing is 4chan's greatest fucking scheme ever. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'd have to, think, I, I, I'd have to I, think on that for a minute. Sorry. I, I don't know I, if that's... I, I might. I might have to agree with Jeremy on that one. I I, th- I think that I think that the flat Earth came out and they're not talking about it and they are sitting that back laughing Earth at really... everybody and that this this blows the flea the free bleeding stuff out of the fucking water like this is just, like, like this is the <laughs> ultimate fucking troll. I think I think that what happened is that there are these Christian conspiracy theorists that claim they have inside government like uh, contacts. Uh, that give them all these secret information, and they they warp this secret information to fit to this you know biblical you know prophecy, and they they use that that flat Earth to reinforce that, and that 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 flat Earth does come from the Christian conspiracy theory like wing of the whole thing. So, so you, so I, you I think, think that's where it started? Some bought a lie a little too hard. Yeah, it, 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 so some people bought a lie a little too hard, and then as soon as it hits 4chan. What happens is, is a shitty meme hits 4chan and then it goes viral, like because 4chan like essentially just fi- fixes it quickly, mm-hmm. like because like 200 million people are looking at 4chan every day or whatever. Yeah, to this day I still haven't ever been there, but I, I hear I, I hear I've all save yourself a lot of I hear all brain about, and well, yeah, it's the same reason I don't go to Reddit. I have no desire to get sucked no, into that world. I'm I've, like, you know I've what? never been on, I've never been on 4chan or Reddit. Thank God. I'm on them almost I have daily. Been, I have been on Reddit. Memes of things. I have been on Reddit, but that's only because somebody sent me a link or something that I clicked on and then it took me to Reddit and then I was like, oh, but I've never willingly gone there myself, like <laughs> typed it in and gone to Reddit. I, I don't know any of the subreddits, any of that stuff. I just have no desire to get sucked into that world because in the back of my mind is always, yeah, the government has done some at- really fucked up shit, but... I always think that there's a much better chance that the shit that's being thrown out there is being thrown out there on purpose. Some by people just wanting to fuck, fuck with others and watch the world burn. <laughs> yeah. Others by factions of the government that want to keep people searching for this shit. They want to keep people focused on this stuff. And again, it's not even you don't even have to be a conspiracy theorist to think that way. You can just use Occam's oh. razor and go, well, that's the most likely no. fucking solution. Not that the world's <laughs> fucking flat and we've had it hidden from us this for this many fucking centuries, but that this started however it started is is actually becomes irrelevant at one point because now it's being pushed by factions mm-hmm. of the government oh, yeah. to yeah. keep people looking and keep people focused well, on maybe this. Also, those well, people that get heavily invested in their views and stuff and everything being built on flat earthers or whatever conspiracy they get behind. I mean, you're, you're going to play your crowd. And, you know, if you find an angle that you know, really lights you up, you're going to like light it up. That's why we we haven't really changed our message in 95 episodes. We're not really trying to get viewers here. We're not trying to get listeners. We're trying to leave a trail here drop seeds that way when people do pick up these things they go holy shit (laughs) and it's not it's not a different it's not a different episode it's not a different story our principles don't change you know these it's always centered around freedom well, and, and just to be clear for, for the people that are listening, and, and Dave wasn't serious about that. We do want listeners, and we do want people to follow us, but but ultimately, you're correct, but uh, don't tell people that we don't want them to listen. I, I want you to fucking listen. God no, damn it. No, we I, put a lot of work into this project. That's not our primary goal. <laughs> that's not our primary goal with this thing. It's, it's, it, I think it's leaving something that, especially people that are like, hey, I really don't know how to talk these things out, but check this out. Well, hey, sure. I don't really know how to voice things, because I run into a lot of people that are like, Dude, when you talk, it's like every it's like you're saying everything I want to say, but I can't say those things. And I'm like, dude, all you got to do is just point people in the right directions and let people that say things better than you say it. Yes, absolutely. Everything everything that we say, everything that you say that I say that Jeremy says, that Danilo says, they've all been said before. We're just saying it in a different way. 
I, th- I think that's that's one of the beautiful things. It's just nothing is new. It nothing nothing. It's it's just it's recycled information. We're just saying it in a different way in hopes that other people will grasp it. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. it's basically just taking the information you've learned and 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 putting it into your own words, which is why I busted your balls before, Dave. When you're like, just go Google it. It's like no, like because what do we what do we, what do we like to say to people all the time when when that's their answer to, to like if they if they present a claim and then you ask them something and that's not their an answer. argument. Well, no, not even not an argument. It's like <laughs> I don't even go that route. I just say if you can't explain it in your own words then chances are you don't actually understand it very well. If all you can do is point to somebody to say, well, look look at this stuff. This is what I researched. Go do the same research. If you can't put what you've learned into your own words, then you probably don't understand it very well. There's a very good chance yeah. that you're simply parroting no, no, stuff that other people has been told. But that's what Jason was talking about. That's what you were talking about. That's what we do. We take this information and try to put it into our own words Number first and foremost, so that we do have a better understanding of it, because you can't be mm-hmm. you can't be preaching a message of anything if you don't actually understand it, because then you're just flapping your fucking gums, and you're just you you're, 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 you're going to suck in the 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 ignorant and the lazy people with that type of with that type of process. Yep. You and need to actually be able to explain trivium. it. It's yeah. trivium. You have to understand the logic behind mm-hmm. what we talk about, the philosophies. You have to understand the logic mm-hmm. behind it. If you don't, all you understand is the rhetoric and the, the grammar, and you're just running around just yep. essentially the, being at, a brain dead liberal. Yep. At, that, or at whatever. that point in time, what? at that point in time, all you are is a parrot. Exactly. Yeah. Just, you know, poly, poly you volunteerism. Yeah. If you can't explain why you want vo- volunteerism, why are you even talking mm-hmm. about it? Yeah. Wait until you can explain why. Yeah, it's it, it definitely that definitely helps because especially especially if you're wanting to encourage others to do the same, you better know how to explain it to them. You know, especially when you're dealing with people who have been indoctrinated for so long and are very hesitant to to even entertain new ideas, especially when they clash with these things that, like I mentioned before, they already see as axioms. You know, anything that challenges those sacred cows that they believe that that's where their starting point is from, it makes it a lot more difficult if you can't actually explain why. Then you just end up like so many angry anarchists like myself who just scream at people and go, why don't you get this? (laughs) (laughs) It takes a lot of patience to advocate voluntarism in this day and age. Well, I... to a certain extent, yes, but I think, at least for myself, I mean, I'm somebody who still works with my my ability to to show patience in a lot of situations because I, I do I am still on edge a lot of the times. But the older I get now, and the more the longer I spend on this side of the fence, and the better understanding I gain of these ideas and why I believe these ideas and why I continue to believe that it's the best possible way for humanity to move forward, that. Well, I don't need to have as much patience anymore because now I've cycled back to the point where I'm not as angry at the people who aren't getting it yet. I'm trying to view them more as how I was right before the light bulb mm-hmm. finally went off for me. And yeah, absolutely, it, that's how that's how I see it too. Yeah, I've I've had I look to, at everybody as is how can I make this fertile ground? That's that's what I do. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and everybody has their own approach. And like I said, for me, it's the more the, the patience that I've had to exert most is with myself, not with other people. I've had to be like, no, no, don't oh, jump. Oh, for sure. Don't jump the gun. <laughs> Remember that you were a complete fucking idiot too, you know, not even a decade ago. So it's not. Yeah, because winning a debate is not the whole story. Yeah. And, and both. Yeah. And, and what, the more skilled you get at debate, the more you realize that debate <laughs> can be futile well it has its merits but just like anything else it has its point of diminishing returns exactly yeah. you know if you, if, if you win a debate but you piss everybody off in the fucking room and they don't want to listen to you who gives a flying fuck if you won if you just yeah. drop some information and made people think and then just walk away you have a much higher percentage of a, ch- a much higher chance rather of actually you know reaching somebody or well, making yeah, people ask more questions that's 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 why that's why i don't debate that's i debate debates to me are about proving somebody else wrong you know it's about winning how can you win at an opinion or a belief you know 
But I'll, I'll you sit can there only and, debate I'll sit, their misunderstanding of the facts, right, Jason? <laughs> Yes. Well, even the facts aren't necessarily facts, right? The, the facts are truth. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're talking about alternative facts now? Now I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Spicer. <laughs> you know, I, I won't debate because debating is about proving somebody wrong or proving somebody right. And my belief isn't necessarily right or wrong. My belief is just my belief. But you ask, you sit there and you want to discuss something with me. I'll discuss as long as I can. I have no issue with the free flow of information back and forth. I love to challenge my own beliefs. I love to hear the opinions of people who do not necessarily believe the same things that I do because it causes me to expand my mind and and contemplate what they're saying and compare it to what I believe and mm-hmm. and try to find, you know, which one works best for me or which one I believe in more. So yeah, I just I just won't debate. I I don't see the I don't see the point in it. Just like I don't see I'm, the point in brutalism. I'm shying further and further away from debating people improperly. Or what I'm saying improperly. Like if there's not an audience, I'm not debating. I'm only going to be trying to make you see your contradiction. That's basically it. Hmm. Well, there, there's there's ways around that without debating. Uh, I like to lead people by questions. You know, if, if somebody mm-hmm. comes at you, so, somebody comes at you with a belief or an idea that is just wholeheartedly wrong, right? Totally illogical. You can lead them through questioning and just, just through simple questions. And you can lead them circularly back to your original point very easily. And people, mm-hmm. people don't realize that what they're saying until they've said it. And then you're going, that's what I just said. And and it, it it does cause some anger, you know. Some people get very upset about that, but you've planted a seed, and that's ultimately uh, what we're all here about, right? Planting seeds, yeah. yeah Try, right. Trying to but, get people but, to think for themselves. But you also have to realize sometimes the ground has to be uh, <laughs> disturbed a little bit after you put a seed on there. I'll leave that to you guys. You can dig it up a little bit, and you can uh, scratch around. But yeah, well, well, but that's actually a great point, Jason. Is that not everybody has to take those tactics because there's plenty of people out there that will. And <laughs> there's a whole lot of them. Well, out yeah, there that will. but there's all, but I don't, again, it's this whole thing of not staying in your own lane that people just get, I don't understand. It's like, Hey, look, if someone's good at an angle, let them be good at that angle. Like, I don't understand why everybody's got to tell everybody how they got to do things. It just drives me nuts. Oh no, I, I agree. That's why, you know, I mean, I, and I've changed my thinking on this because, you know, there was a time that I thought there was only like one or two ways that this could be, this could be done, but, there are. There's a bunch of different methods. They everything, you know, not everybody's going to get triggered by the same thing to make them start thinking. It's, you know, there's certain people that need the smack you upside the head approach. You know, we've had plenty of people I, I, that come on here and talk about the fact that that's what they required. Other people need to just be given certain information and then be allowed to go mm-hmm. off and think about it for themselves. You know, I came closer to that but somewhere in between those two you know that was kind of my thing i needed a couple of things to smack me in the face to go whoa wait a minute what am i missing what why why isn't this making sense anymore and then i and then i was lucky enough to be introduced to somebody who kind of guided me in a very hands-off way for like eight months or so to kind of just like throw information my way and then just walk away and be like hey i'll talk to you later and then check in with me a little while later but hey how's it going what would you think about that you know any new thoughts Oh, okay. And then just walk away again, you know, and let me do all the own, my thinking on my own and start questioning myself and start arguing with myself to finally be like, oh crap, he was right. I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah. That, that's how it was with me too. Cause I'm a, I'm a very introverted person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had to read, I, I would read everything and then think about it and think about it and think about it for hours on end and just, mm-hmm challenge everything that i knew you know i I have a very open mind in that and that i can challenge myself and just everything that i had read everything that i had come to know was wrong and that i had to go out and seek the answers for the holes that i had just created in my in my my mind and my beliefs by realizing that i was wrong you know that's I, I think there are a lot of more people out there like that than there are brutalists, you know, pe- people that need to get smacked. 
Mm. And and that's where that's where I, I, I tend to gear myself towards is, is reaching those people that that are in that are confused, right? That are, that are in between, you know, like the, the statism, but they're not ready for full blown voluntarism. You know, that that gap where they're not sure what's going on, they're not sure what they believe, and they just need a little bit of a guiding hand. You know, some some information, right? Some some more seeds, some more seeds, some um, some more inspiration to go out and and to seek the answers that they need. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's that's my uh, that's my niche. Well, yeah, well, yeah. do it do what works for you, man. And and uh-huh. while while we're saying this about you know that there are there are, you know everybody people are going to be reached in different ways. And I, while I agree with it, with you said Dave about how you know. Just, letting everybody kind of run in their own lane and just you know if that's working for you if that's the way you are able to convey information to other people then then keep doing it but i think what a lot of people lose sight of is the fact that not everybody is going to be open to the message the way they mm-hmm. deliver it that's where i think we run into a lot more problems is, yeah yeah perfect example is sterling like sterling is not economical enough for me in my opinion like i just Nope. I wish he would talk more economics, but his angle I love. I keep doing it. Oh, you know, that like, is. I'm not going to criticize him in any way about that. But you know, just as a dude, as a person, just like I wish he would talk more economics. But you know, that's just me. Well, I, oh, yeah, yeah. The psych, psychology, psychologic anarchist. I think. But I'm not going to bash him. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to bash him and be like, "You don't talk economics, so fuck you." Like that. I don't think that solves anything. Well, I, if I no. remember correctly, Sterling, like me, economics isn't the strongest suit there. You know, that was my whole thing. Like, I, I, I loved being around Danilo because he taught me so much because I've, you know, as I've said before, history was my thing. That's how I got here. Mm-hmm. You know, and I've had to learn more about economics because I was not strong in that. I don't, I don't remember. if Star- I could have swore Sterling wasn't like, it's not that he's, he's an idiot about it, but it's not like his strong suit. But he found, he found his niche and that's what he's doing. Yeah. But at least with somebody like Sterling, he seems to understand that his message is not geared for everybody. So he doesn't exactly. try to force. He doesn't. Tr- not only do people like you say, "Okay, Sterling, that's what you're doing. Go ahead, do go for it, man." He himself recognizes that not everybody will accept his message that mm-hmm. way, and he doesn't try to force it on those people. He just, you know gives it a shot and if they still like they show that much resistance he finds an easy way to back out of it without cause with with trying not to cause any conflict with them and just let them go on their own and find another way to have have them be reached you know and i i think that's a, a lot of people's issue right now especially unfortunately i see it a lot that so many people think their method is the best way and that if people are not willing to listen to their method then they're stupid there there's no point in talking to them at all not just them there's no point in <laughs> yeah. anybody talking to them at all because they can't be i think reached. that's just frustration getting played out man i i've been sitting back a, a, a lately and just watching a lot of people that are in this class i would call meme maker well i i think all three of us in this room are in this chat so I've just been watching. A lot of people are, are just frustrated, I think. And, and it's, there's nothing. There's no hill to die on. There's no election to talk about. There's no, It's just right now there's just a lot of confusion. The dust is settling still. So everyone's kind of just frustrated. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Everybody's tends to be uh, trying to fill that void with something. You know, we spent the last, mm-hmm. what, like 18, 18 months talking about the election. And mm-hmm. now now it's over. And... What do we do now? <laughs> we react to Trump. That's yeah. that's what no. we do. Well, sadly, sadly, most people aren't reacting to Trump. They aren't reacting to government. They're reacting to these liberals burning buildings and smashing well, windows. Well, I, I, I've been trying to I've been trying to keep on the government's ass. I didn't let the, I didn't take the fucking put off, foot off the gas at all. Unfortunately, I've been accused of trying to be edgy. I've been accused of un- attacking Trump unnecessarily. It's like no, 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 no. I, I'm just not letting up. No, I would have attacked <laughs> every status ever. I would have continued. I would have continued attack, attacking Hillary from day fucking one too. It didn't matter to me who oh, got. It didn't matter to me who won that fucking election. I was going to keep fucking no, pounding reg- to me regardless. No. But that's what so no. many people did. A lot of people held up, and they're like, "Well, now you're just trying." Like I, I literally got accused of trying to be edgy so many times, and I, like I hate that word. It's like, first of all, dude, I may 
dress a certain way and I may use certain words, but I'm almost 40. I am most definitely not trying to be fucking edgy. I am not a motherfucking teenager. I hate when people who are supposed to be grown fucking adults use this terminology like other grown adults are trying to be children. And are there grown adults who are trying to be children? They think you're fucking just being a shitlord to be a shitlord. No, dude. I'm no. just fucking doing the same goddamn thing. That's why that Pepe meme that I put out the other day explained my position so fucking fucking well because I didn't name any I didn't name any uh, politicians by name and I didn't point the finger at any one particular group because it's the way I feel about most people at this point I'm yeah. still on the same fucking message and all of a sudden a whole bunch of other people seem to be on a completely different message it's like what the fuck happened <laughs> there yeah, I th like I said oh go ahead Jason I was gonna say I greeted the new boss the same as I greeted the old boss with my middle finger in the air I don't care who's in office. Oh, no, no, exactly. The same way, Jason. Like, I'm like, no, still, fuck Trump. I, I like some of the things he's doing. I pragmatically wanted him to win. I didn't vote, but I mean, who the fuck wanted Hillary to win? <laughs> like, I don't care uh, what you call yourself, unless you were like a Hillary voter. I don't think you wanted Hillary to win. Uh, okay. See, I. No, even, even the Hillary voters I mean, I, didn't that, want that, Hillary the to win. The part in me. The part of me that wanted to watch the world burn wanted Hillary to win, but I well, think this is going to continually zombie even, the state out longer and longer and longer with Trump being in there because I do think he's going to reform some things and I do think yes. he's going to fix a lot of the problems, and, but slavery can't be fixed. You know, it, of course ever. it can't, but that, no. that was, that's been my argument and that I've, I've said this again recently. I still, the more and more I think about it, I still think the better shot for freedom quicker was a Hillary win because yep. the problem is, and I, I think I said, I don't know, who knows? I may have said this uh, last week, but it, it bears repeating if I did that the most anarchists, most libertarians, most people who believe that a stateless society is preferable and the uh, and it is a preferable, uh, uh, preferable solution uh, over anything else seem to come to a consensus that on the whole, it tends to be easier to reach people on the right. At least that's the tr the, the trope I've been hearing for years now. And in my own experiences, well, you your, your transaction, even. well, exactly. In my own experiences, that made sense. And I have been saying for quite a while now that while so many people think that Trump would be better because Hillary's so evil, it's like, well, hold on a second. If the people that you think you have a much better chance of reaching are on the right and you let the and or you let but whatever the the right wins how many of those people are going to now hesitate and go oh wait a minute my side won oh yeah oh wait a minute yep. he's doing things that he said he was going to do yep. that I like even if there's bad things oh but but he's doing these things and Hillary would have never done these things how many of those people now see this as a political win for them and it will now become Ouch. complacent again and go oh well it was definitely Quiet. all Obama's fault or it was what you know it was um, at whatever yeah. it isn't the system no. it was the person you know yeah, just, I, just I, I still don't believe Trump's an outsider I still he's not I, I just he's not an outsider I, I, I no, think what he not. is is a, is a, <laughs> he's an allowed reaction to absorb you know com like so their system doesn't fall apart or at least not yet. He's been a politician for over three decades who finally uh, got he, allowed to hold an office. That's what Trump he's is. Totally. He's totally a product of, of big government protectionist laws. I mean, they, oh, the, guy, sure. the, the guy exists because of big government. Of course he's going to be for big government. Assuming he is in a time <laughs> travel. You're yes. Assuming. Yes. <laughs> assuming. Just not assuming. Let's I mean, put that theory to the side yeah. for a second. For the the, for the, the, the latter is the most likely case, but let's just go with your <laughs> wacky the theory, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the that guy, was our the wrap guy, up cue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. We probably should get wrapping up soon, but but yeah, but that I mean that's that's my point. I I really think that on some level uh, a Hillary victory might have actually done better for freedom quicker because more people would have stayed even more pissed off. And yeah, sure, the, the, the people on the left are crying and they're pissed off and they're, you know, they're threatening all this stuff. But just imagine how much more the people that were already pissed off, how much more pissed off they'd be now. Oh, yeah. And the anti-war Dave wanted Trump to win. The, just the, the one that didn't want to see war happen.
Now, maybe war might be what has to happen to get the state to collapse. I don't know. But the part of me that didn't want to see, you know, anyone in my family die in a war or millions of people die in a war that no one really had control over anyways. Like, I, I felt that was coming with Hillary. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people felt that was coming with Hillary. Yeah, well, it was a I fear. I mean, she was yeah. basically openly saying she was going to go to war with Russia. I, well, well, so, you, like... You still got a chance at your war, Dave. Iran's going off the petrodollar. <laughs> well, yep. That's, what's going to happen oh. if Trump goes off the petrodollar? Well, well pe Trump's not going off the petrodollar. You can guarantee Petro that Trump's shit. Trump's not going off the petrodollar. But no, yeah. <laughs> this is one executive order. <laughs> <laughs> he could do that shit in the middle of the night. That's not that. It'll it'll get it'll get over. They'll find a way to overrun that so quickly. Oh yeah, because they sure. they can't let that happen. The 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 entire <laughs> pencil the, go in there and pencil whip another. They can't they can't pull board. out of that. That, that that's that last one. The, they they depend on that staying the way it is so they can survive. If it goes away, everybody's screwed. Fuck it. <laughs> I well, I don't care either. But they're not going to let it happen. It's just like with the yeah. Fed. Nothing's ever going to happen to the Fed, no matter how much he talked about. No it. no nothing's no. Ever something's ever eventually gonna going to happen to the Fed, Jeremy. Like you can't say nothing's ever going to happen. Like eventually. Oh no, no no. Okay no no. I and I meant I meant by them. They're not going to do yeah. something to the Fed. No, they're no, not going to no. get not rid of the Fed. This. No. Yeah no no. Oh the, hell the, no. The go the government go after the Fed. <laughs> no. Not exactly. at all. The government, Never. no, 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 no empire, no. no empire corrects course, guys. They always collapse. <laughs> that, Every one of them. That's prove what, me wrong, well, please. Well, prove me wrong. Well, that's that's why I said earlier today when I saw when when I saw somebody else saying, you know, it's I, I I feel really weird when I keep liking some of the stuff that Trump does, and it's like, well, yeah, of course you're gonna like some of this stuff. He's not he's not gonna be a complete asshole, and he's definitely gonna change things because they always do. But come mm -hmm. talk to me when something actually happens to the Fed, something actually happens about the drug war, and bombs stop getting dropped all over the fucking world. When that shit changes, I, then come talk to me about how, wait a minute, maybe I, yeah. something's going a little different. Because the rest of this shit is, yeah. is superficial bullshit. Even the fucking, even the, yeah. the executive order to get rid of the, 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 the stupid bake the cake shit. Is that a, is that a, is that a step towards freedom? Oh, absolutely, because it was bullshit that it was put in place in the first in, in, in the you know. No, no, was he's in enforcing it. No, I thought he was reversing it. No, no, uh, he's no, no. He, the, the he said LBGT he, he, yeah, he said he's enforcing it. Yeah. He oh, said it's gonna it's gonna stay in place. Oh, really? I was not aware yeah, of that. He, yeah, he's very pro uh, uh, gay agenda. Like, like most of his. No, 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 no. It was is, no. It, I meant so it. <laughs> No, because the way the way they set it up now, people can sue for this. I thought he didn't want people to be able to sue for that shit. He actually wants. Uh, them I don't to be able know. As far as I know, that that as far as I know, he's Pence gonna, had to concede to become his vice president. Oh. As, as far as I know, he said he's continuing Obama's uh, LGBTQ yeah. uh, protections. Mm. That doesn't make any sense for him to do that right now. He only wants us to look like a hero in that first year. Well, that, that's really what I'm saying. But any anything like that, any of these things that get changed, will they? If if policies that were in, infringing on freedom, if they get changed, will they? You know, be for the better? Sure, it's, 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 it no. happens all the time. <laughs> but they're not significant <laughs> it's, enough. It's it's for the better. Congratulations! No, no. If the Fed doesn't you're nothing like, in. Nothing changes. Yeah. No Fed yeah, change, no not, the nothing. The big thing, the, if the military, the Fed, and the shit with the drug, the drug war don't change, then nothing is really changing. And the education yeah. system, like all yeah. four of those things, yeah. have to change, or well, it's you, gonna, even one of them, they're going to collapse. All four of them. Even, but even if one of them was actually drastically altered in some way, then I could believe. Then I could really start to believe that there might be actually some change happening. But all the other stuff mm -hmm. is really just window dressing, and so many people got get caught up in it because they're just like, "Look, it's positive. Look, it's positive." It's like, yeah, and. Yeah. How much yeah, look, freer look, are you actually? Are you get are look, you getting are you getting stolen from any less? I mean, sure, he rolled out this wonderful tax plan. Is that actually gonna that get has implemented? To be imp passed. Yeah, yeah. Is it, it actually to gonna get implemented? Yeah. I don't think the I don't think any president has ever got their plan in like straight up that quick, like just boom right in. It usually takes yeah. like the last day of their <laughs> dying breath to get their taxes through, and it's like Okay, good luck with the next guy. That's the problem with democracy, right? It's the tragedy of the commons with authority. Uh, it, but anyways. Yeah. Yeah. My, my whole thing is, congratulations, you're less of a slave. But you're still <laughs> a freaking slave. Unle unless he does something big, nothing small he does matters. You know, un unless, he, unless he cuts taxes or, like, gets rid of the, the National Firearms Act or, or oh, something don't, big. Don't get me hard oh. on here, Jason. Yeah. 
I know, I know. I, I'm having wet dreams about the NFA going away. Also. All right, before Ooh. before we before we go completely into the uh, porn edition of Fully this episode, auto. I think we should <laughs> we should probably get wrapping up though. So before yeah, we, I, I just want detachable magazines, Dave. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, you're in California. <laughs> uh, yeah, California yeah. stand. Yes. Well. Oh. All right. Get out. Yeah. But, well, before we get wrapping up, first of all, Jason, this has been a great conversation. So, man, I'm I'm glad you finally came on. Thank you for finally doing this. And do you have anything you want to say in closing? And of course, please plug any and all of the pages that you uh, wish to plug. Let's see. Do I have any pages? Uh, well, you know, check me out at, at a wolf in the sheep's world. Uh, I have a new one called uh, Positivity Love Voluntarism. That's a positivity period, love period, voluntarism period. All one word. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, or hit me up on my personal page. I'm friends with Dave and Jeremy here. You know, I, I love answering questions. I love helping people. I, I love giving people links or, or reading material or, or whatever else. I'm, I'm open. Uh, I have no issue helping people. So hit me up. And um, the only thing I want to say is that there is nothing the government does or claims to do that we, through communal or voluntary action, cannot do for ourselves. Word yeah. up. The, the state is a, a complete farce. I agree, Jason. It's just. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, on that note, I think we will close things out. Perfect note to end it on. So, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at the Seeds of Liberty.com, including our Patreon information, which I don't often talk about much, but Danilo's not here around to hawk it all the time, so I might as well throw a plug in for it every once in a while. We do have a Patreon <laughs> account. We don't actually put up a lot of content on there. I have a bunch of stuff saved that one of these days I'm going to get around to and start putting our pre-show and post-show stuff up. I think that's going to go. That's where that's going to end up going. Some of the conversations <laughs> we've had that have oh actually Lord. that have never made it to. The, well, <laughs> of course, I'll be careful, Dave. Maybe, uh, <laughs> but there should be there'll be some interesting stuff up there. But uh, you know, if anybody wants to help us out, it is greatly appreciated. We do have I plead the fifth. A wonderful group of people who have already been contributing to us <laughs> for quite a while and helping us keep the lights on around here. Because as we've said before, we don't get paid for this. We, I never get, got into this looking to get paid, but helping us be able to afford to keep the you know the lines open and actually have some place to store our information is helpful. So anything uh, people are willing to shove shove our way, we do appreciate. So once again, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast, and we will catch you next week. Peace. Seeds of Liberty, 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 Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT No Gov License allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.